In this video, we're going to take a look at the most versatile Raspberry Pi clone on the market today. This thing has a ton of emulation power, and it can reuse most of the Pi ecosystem. So here is the Indie Droid Nova. And in this first section, I just wanna go over what makes it significant. Now let's get one thing out of the way. Obviously Nova isn't the only SBC that copies the Raspberry Pi layout. Like that's not a revolutionary idea. A lot of other ones have done that, but I think those ones never really had a compelling reason to pick them over the Raspberry Pi. Before the RK3588 released, there weren't really good SBCs to use as an alternative to the Raspberry Pi. You basically had things like the RK3399 or some Amlogic processors, but none of those really had that much more performance over the Raspberry Pi model that was on offer at the same time. And then when you factor in all of the other benefits that you get with a Raspberry Pi, there's not really a lot of reasons to pick them over the Raspberry Pi. That's not the case with this one. The RK3588S is a huge leap over the Raspberry Pi and even in the early days with bad drivers, this thing far outclasses the processor in the Raspberry Pi. Let's start going over these two SBCs. On the right side, I have the Raspberry Pi 4, and on the left side, I have the Indie Droid Nova. I'm gonna put some of the specs on both sides so you can see some of the differences at a glance, but I think really the biggest difference is going to be the upgrade from the older processor to this newer one. The RK3588S has a much better CPU than the one in the Raspberry Pi 4, and it has a much better GPU, even at this early stage with our unfinished GPU drivers. Outside of that, there are some physical differences between these two boards. This isn't a one-to-one -one clone of the Raspberry Pi 4. I think the biggest difference is going to be in the port selection. On the Nova, we lose one of the HDMI ports to gain a Type-C port that can support DisplayPort video out. We also have a slightly different position for this connector at the bottom, as well well as the underside. This one has a Wi-Fi chip on the bottom, along with an EMMC module that you can remove. I do just want to point out that this is an earlier prototype of the Indie Droid Nova. I have a later revision that has a different GPIO header, but that one is installed inside a console at this point. But outside of those things, this is a pretty close clone to the Raspberry Pi 4, and it's close enough to make it very useful for what I want to do with it. One of the best parts about this SBC is the fact that it can reuse most of the ecosystem that's available for the Pi 4. I own a bunch of these console cases for the Pi 4, and I've always wanted to use them with an RK3588 SBC. The problem is that these kinds of cases are very expensive to make, and no company is going to put in the effort that it takes to get one of these fabricated if they don't have a sizable market to sell to. When you're dealing with the Raspberry Pi, you have millions of potential customers to sell to, so the incentive is there for you to make these kinds of products. We don't have that with other SBCs that I've reviewed over the last year. You basically have the case that is made by the company or some 3D printed options that are made by people in the community, and that is it. In some cases, those cases are a lot more money than the equivalent one for the Raspberry Pi. On this table, I have some of my favorite Pi 4 cases that I want to use or try to use with Nova. Three of these are retro flag cases that I've shown before with a bunch of cool features. You saw the PS1 case in the intro, and that one is probably the coolest one out of the bunch, but the NES one or the Super Nintendo one are also pretty cool options for Nova. My last case is a new one that I am hoping works for Nova. It has a PC style cooling fan with RGB lights and it has an OLED screen on the front that can be used for a ton of things. The Pi ecosystem extends to things outside of cases, so those things would also benefit Nova, but this is what I'm most excited about because this is a huge shortcoming for other boards that I like and boards that I use. As I mentioned before, Nova has a bunch of different distros available right out the gate. This is largely due to the community of developers that spend time on this project and because the Nova creator was good about sending out free developer units to people that were interested in working on the board. Your default OS with Nova is Android 12 and that's going to be the distro that will give you the best emulation performance at this point. Outside of that, there are a few Linux distros that are interesting depending on how you want to use this board. Notable options here are Armbian, Ubuntu, Bado Serra, and Just Enough Linux. Those last two options are perfect for turning this into a gaming console with one of the cheap Pi 4 cases from the previous section. Now there are other RK3588 SBCs that have more distros available than this. Some of the more popular boards from companies like Rock Pi or Orange Pi have huge communities of people that are developing for them. But this is a great showing for a brand new company, and I think anyone that buys these kinds of boards or follows this market would tell you the same thing. When this board does get mainline support, that will make it a lot easier to get anything that you want running on this in the future. 
Now that we've got that out of the way, let's talk about how I plan to use this. This board came with a heatsink and a fan, along with an eMMC module that's flashed with Android. I'm planning on using Android with one of the cases that I have, but I don't think I'm gonna need this heatsink and fan. The fan that's inside those retro flag cases is the same one that's here on this heatsink, so I don't expect that there'll be a big difference in terms of thermal performance between this case and those ones. So my first use case for this is to use Armbian with the ice cooling tower that I showcased at the beginning of this video. I always wanted to use this case, but I never got around to it, and I had other cases that I could use with the Pi 4s that I own. I'm gonna use Armbian for this because I'm very familiar with it after making my last few RK3588 videos. The image is pretty bare bones, but I know how to configure these things from stock, so that isn't a problem for me. So I've gone ahead and assembled this entire thing, but it does have some problems. This OLED screen on the front can't work because the board's GPIO pins aren't exactly pin to pin with the Raspberry Pi, but it can work with some modifications. That is going to have to wait for another day because I need to do some hardware and software modifications to try and get this to work with Nova. But with a wireless screen, I'm able to get this thing started up and I have some system stats on the right side of the screen. I've gone ahead and configured this with Box86 and I'm using the Panfrost GPU drivers. We are able to get Doom 3 running on this. I have Nova running at maximum clocks with performance governors for everything and we're floating around 60 Celsius right now. This cooler doesn't have the best contact with this CPU using the stock thermal pads at this time, so I would have to go back and change those to different ones to get the performance to be a bit better than it is right here. Let's switch over to World of Warcraft. This is also running with Box86. We are getting good performance at 720p resolution with the graphics set to low. Our CPU temp is a bit higher at this point, but I would expect this game to run between 50 and 60 Celsius if we made some changes to the cooler. The only problem with this game is that I have bad latency to the server, but the game itself is very playable on this hardware. My next use case is to use this Super Nintendo Pi case with Android or just enough Linux to turn this into an emulation console. When it comes to Android, we can get some pretty good performance on this board, and my benchmark data from this is about the same as it is on other SBCs that I own with this processor. I've already covered the emulation performance on this board at length. This thing is great for retro systems, and it can do some of the high-end systems like PlayStation 2, GameCube, Wii, 3DS, and PlayStation Vita. A lot of those options are gonna be better on Android, but some of the lower end systems are great for something like Just Enough Linux. This case has cooling inside, and if I run those lower end systems, I don't expect that there's going to be any issues in terms of thermal load. Now in any video like this that's comparing directly against the Pi 4, we do have to talk about some of the shortcomings that you have with a product like this. I picked out two shortcomings that I think Nova has at this point compared to the Raspberry Pi or other more popular SBCs that are on the market. The first one is gonna be on price. For the package that you see on screen right now, this board retails for well over $100, which is not the most expensive RK3588 product that I've reviewed on the channel, but it is closer to the top. There are other companies that are selling SBCs with this processor for less money, but those companies are also a lot bigger than the team that made this one. They can buy these components in a larger volume and get better discounts from their distributors. This company doesn't have that kind of benefit, so it's a little harder for them to be competitive on a price standpoint when you are just looking at the raw math of everything. Outside of that, I think the next biggest shortcoming is going to be in the documentation of this board. This is a shortcoming compared to the Raspberry Pi 4, but also compared to all of the other RK3588 products that are out there. The documentation that is available right now is really bare bones, but if you are an experienced person, that might not be a downside to you. I think if you're someone that is new to these kinds of products or you are new to SBCs or Linux in general, then this would not be my first board. There is a silver lining here because there's an incentive in place from one of the distributors of Nova to build out their documentation by giving away free swag. I think if the right person comes in here with some technical knowledge and they're able to revamp or expand upon what is already there, then this will make this ecosystem and this product a lot more compelling to general users. If you don't need anything more than just the standard Android that this ships with, then you're gonna be just fine with how it is at this point in time. But if you want to learn more or you want to improve your abilities, this one is not an easy platform to pick up. Which one of these do you like the most? Blue one. What can the blue one do? It has lights and it can't plug it in. This one the best one? 
But that's going to wrap up this video on the Indie Droid Nova. Really appreciate you taking the time to watch this one. And if you enjoyed it, feel free to take a look at the video that I did recently on the RK3588 SBC router. That thing is awesome.